So what was in that letter? Um, any, event, any guesses? Those of you who know it probably know what was in the letter. Um, but it definitely turns the scene around, as you could tell. That was the pivotal, the pivotal moment in that scene. And what it is, is it's a letter that Enrico has had forged in the hand of Edgardo, uh, a, a letter from Edgardo to another woman declaring his love for that other woman. And it's a, it's a, a trump card that, he, that Enrico does not wish to play. So prior to the moment that we get to the letter, he's trying to convince her by any other means to you know, go ahead and accept this. And when she doesn't, he finally has to pull out this trump card knowing that it's going to just destroy her. We have to remember that the, 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 this opera really does very much center on death. And it's not just a general operatic death, which often occurs because it offers, often has tragic endings. But it's, it, the, there is the, the mood of death. It takes place in graveyards. It's very kind of gothic. And um, uh, Lucia's mother, Lady Ashton, has recently passed away. So it's, it's, it's kind of the whole thing is shrouded in death. And um, uh, Lucia is very fragile from her recent mother's death, plus almost being killed by a bull, plus falling in love with the mortal enemy of their family. She's having a tough time. <laughs> And, and, she, and so she's in a very fragile state. And we've talked about, uh, like Juliet, uh, uh, who falls in love with the wrong guy, um, both Juliet and I think Lucia were actually very, very strong young women. They're very willful because they go ag against the, the norms of the time in pursuing the men that they love. Um, uh, but of course, Lucia is very fragile at the same time. So it's trying to find that mix of strength, uh, willfulness almost, and, uh, or, or commitment and integrity. It's not willfulness. She's not just stubborn. Uh, she really has, uh, loves this man. And she, in her mind, has taken this sacred vow of marriage to this man. Uh, and that was the ring that you saw her show him, uh, was the ring that Edgardo had given her. Um, so he finally does show her the letter, and that's what breaks her heart and makes her finally give in. Uh, there's one more scene after this where, where the minister, Raimondo, um, uh, actually comes in and tries to convince her some more. So she's not, by the end of this scene, she's not quite convinced. Um, but that's what the letter was there. Any uh, thoughts on anything else or questions? Yes, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't uh, A lot of the music is in a minor key. I'll a lot, uh, right, as he said, there's a, lo a lot of tragedy going on. There's a lot of people dying and, and people having to marry people they don't want to. Yeah, so there's a lot of minor. But minor is not always sad. Minor can be expressive. And the, think of the idea of starting with a blank canvas and that the composer and the, art, the singers and the musicians, they paint this atmosphere, this picture for each scene on it. Sometimes it might be maybe black and dark blues and that sort of, and sometimes it might be yellows and greens and you know bright colors, depending on what the emotion is. Yeah. Why do you think Verdi was criticized for being um, uh, Verdi when Donizetti had a lot of <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know, that's a great question that I really can't answer. Um, I will say different times. I mean, there, there were different times. Verdi came after this. Um, and tastes, you know, of, of people, you know, the public change. So I, I can't, I can't say. I will, I will say yes. He was criticized for that, but at the same time, when you hear mm, bum 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 la don, you know, people burst, burst into applause. So they might be critical of him, but I don't think it was. It wasn't a game changer. It didn't stop his career. So. I yes, and by the time Verdi, by the time Verdi was writing his middle period operas, <coughs> Wagner was, you know, Flying Dutchman had already been written, right? So the changing times were were there. Yeah. yeah. Good to see. Okay, let's move on, please, because we are getting near the end. I do want to touch on um, a lot happens in the rest of the opera. I mean, she is forced to marry uh, Arturo. Uh, tragedy does happen and then by the very end of the opera after the mass after she goes mad and dies and everything um 
the tenor is very remorseful because he came back, he found that his beloved has betrayed him, married someone else, and he decides that he has to end his life. And he, he decides to fight a duel early in the morning with Enrico. And this, is, this aria happens um, at the very end of the opera. So I want to give you a, a taste of that because it's, a, once again, a different colorization. And then we'll finish up with the famous sextet, which I'm sure many of you have heard many times. And then we will bid you adieu. And you can go on to where you go. I'm going to go see Tom Crady tonight. So, and maybe some of you will join me. So. This is um, Matthew White. <laughs> 